This is an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar looking at practical uses of masks in Adobe Premiere Pro CC. Hi, this is Larry Jordan. In this excerpt, I'll show you how to use a mask to remove a color cast. This is a typical scene where we have a color cast. Maybe the color cast is green or it's blue or it's, it's the right color but the exposure is wrong. This to me is where masks become magical. Remember I said that if something is supposed to be gray, and gray includes white and black, if something is supposed to be gray, it must contain equal amounts of red, green, and blue. Well, how do we find out what's supposed to be gray, and how do we isolate it? And more importantly, how do we measure it once we've got it isolated? All those can be answered by using the scopes and masks. So she would prefer that she have regular non-green skin. Well, I know that it's green. I can tell that it's green by looking at it, but what do I have to adjust? Let's go to our color layout and let's display the Lumetri scopes. And we can see that there's a lot of green and yellow. We also have some magenta from her shorts and red from the bicycle. But it doesn't really help me in terms of color correcting, except I need to say, uh, Larry, take some green out. Yeah, but how much and in what direction and exactly what color green? That's a much harder question to answer just by looking at the scope. Your eye says it's screwed up, but your eye does not say what you have to do specifically to fix it. That's where masks can help. Let's go back to effect controls and let's zoom in so that I can see something that's supposed to be gray. Something that's supposed to be gray is white or black, or medium gray. But we don't have something that's medium gray, but I do have something which is the color white, but a grayscale value of gray, which is her white t-shirt. So I'm going to go to the opacity section. I'm going to just put in a, a simple mask that focuses on her white t-shirt. Now I need to see as much of the white as I can. I don't want any feathering, so I'll set the feathering to zero. So now I've got sharp edges. Okay, so now I've got something which is supposed to be gray. If I look at it on the scopes, it's gray is a single dot in the center of the vector scope. But look at this huge arm out here where the color goes way toward green and yellow. i got to fix it. Well, to correct a color, you add the opposite color. Let's go to the Lumetri panel. Let's go to color wheels. And we always start with midtones when we're adjusting color. Okay, this tells me exactly which way I've got to go. My color is down left. I need to go up right. So down left makes it worse. Up left doesn't do anything. It just causes the dot to wander around the vector scope. But if I move this in the opposite direction, notice that I've now dialed out all that color cast. So when I go back to effect controls and turn off that mask, this is, this is where to go. Lumetri is down here. This is before, and that's after. Before and after. Is that not cool? Well, the secret is having something that's supposed to be gray on set. Now, clearly, I try at every possible opportunity to white balance my cameras before I start shooting. And I try also to make sure that I record uh, an 18% gray card and keep that on file so that I can quickly color correct my clips. But you and I both know that in the heat of battle, we sometimes forget to white balance. I'm sure you have never forgotten, but it's occurred to me more than once. And it'd be nice to have that gray chip card with me all the time, and sometimes I just forget. So what I do is as part of the set, I put in a gray coffee cup or a gray rock, a rock that I know has no color associated with it, or something else that's small, looks believable in that particular environment, and is exactly a gray color. I can then zoom in, as you just saw, drop a mat around that. Even if it's only like 10 pixels by 10 pixels, I can get in that tight. I only need a couple of pixels to be able to determine the color value. 
because every pixel has color information. We talked about that earlier. And then dial out the color cast by looking at those pixels on the vector scope. This has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar looking at the practical uses of masks inside Adobe Premiere Pro CC. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at larryjordan.com store and look for Webinar 244. By the way, membership is a great value when you need to stretch your training dollars. Membership in our video training library saves you money and time. You can access all of our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's more than 1,900 movies, hundreds of hours, on a wide variety of subjects. Plus, premium members can download practice media and projects. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it multiple times every month. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com slash membership. And thanks.